I just want to let you guys know that I'm with Occupy Wall Street. I've been down there on and off since day two. On September 24th, we marched up here to Union Square, and about two blocks from here, I was arrested. They tried to throw me down to the floor, but I didn't let them. They put the cuffs on me so tight that I still have no feeling in my thumbs. They locked us in the back of a van and didn't let us out. We were over there for over four hours. 16 people, some of us had been maced, some of them had uh, gashes on their eyebrows, people had gashes on their legs, punched in the face. I had no shoes on, we had no water, we had been marching for hours, and they left us there like that, and it was disgusting. And it's beautiful because people who never experienced this type of brutality came out there that day, and they saw it, and they realized that the things that people are talking about are really happening, and they have to take a stand against it. So I just wanna let you know that I think it's a beautiful thing that we're all out here today, and I think it's amazing that People who never experienced this before, they just got a small taste of what's going on, not only here in New York, but all over the country in marginalized neighborhoods everywhere. And now they know that this is a reality. And this sign right here, this sign right here has pictures of me where my ex-boyfriend was beating on me and the cops did nothing. So even though, even though they didn't, or they weren't the ones who did that to me, the fact that they did not help me and that the courts didn't help me was enough to call it police brutality. So I thank everyone for being out here. Keep doing what you do. This is not the end. Let's keep pushing on. Occupy everything. <laughs> Everything is possible. 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 Everything's a new beginning. You are hero to the living. You are hero to the living. Impossible's the super villain. Breathe. Take a breath and know the feeling. Life is only worth the living, only if you're true to the dreamer that's in you. Never catch me napping, dreaming is an action. Cause people work for their job, and they work to be robbed. And they work for their money, and they work for their health. But when you work for yourself, you find worth in yourself. Cause everything, everything is possible, 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 everything is possible. When I was a child, I fantasized about being a police officer, a beacon of all that was good in the world, experiencing the thrill of adventures and catching bad guys. Until a few years ago, until a few years later, I realized that I looked more like the part of the bad guy. Even worse and reinforced by the way I was treated, I fit the description by association from where I lived, clothes I wore, how I spoke, music I listened to. All of these things betrayed me. All of the things that made me me also were red flags for hunches and probable causes. Hands behind your head, hands where I can see them. Hands on the steering wheel, face the wall, face the car, spread them. Do you know why I stopped you? Let me see some ID. Step out of the car, lay on the ground. You can go now. Hands up, empty your pockets. What are you doing here? Move along. Do you have any weapons? Stop. Move. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Shut up. Have you ever had no choice? Have you ever been stripped of your autonomy, your dignity, under the guise of the public good? For whose sake, get up in your face, they may stop and frisk sound so great. But who's supposed to feel safe when the youth don't feel safe? and you don't feel safe. Thank you. February 4th will mark seven years since the death of my brother David Glazensky. He died uh, in the morning on North Main Street in Southampton Village. His death was unnecessary and unjust, and I am compelled to speak out. David was shocked with 50,000 volts of electricity over and over again. He was beaten and pepper sprayed. I would like to pe for people to take a moment and imagine what it is like for a family to lose a loved one to police violence. First, your world is filled with utter confusion. 
as those sworn to protect you destroy your loved one. Then you're made to feel isolated as the police force mobilizes to protect their own at the cost of the truth. And then to diminish their guilt by publicly demonizing the victim. Your natural support system may be unsympathetic when you turn to them for emotional or spiritual solace. Having been influenced by the police slant that always receives most of the media attention, even the strongest family's integrity is challenged by this onslaught. And at best, you and your family must assume a defensive posture instead of seeking the necessary closure in your grief. The natural search for justice shall set many tasks and obstacles before you. The death of my brother, David Glazensky, has caused my family to suffer immeasurably. Our grief has only been compounded by the knowledge of how violently he was taken from us. On the morning that David encountered the police officers who did this to him, he had no weapon and committed no crime. There is no excuse or justification for the way he was tortured and executed on a public street. The people responsible for this heinous act of brutality are still walking free, on the job, and have been charged with no crime. At this date and time, they, they've refused to issue any facts about the death of my brother. They've stonewalled and hidden the truth from me and my entire family, and they've not had the decency it took a year for them to have the decency to inform our family of an official cause of death. We received no autopsy for one year. And then at the end of the year, uh, the cause of death was excited delirium. They basically said he had scared himself to death. Uh, I'm gonna beg for a moment from this and describe his injuries to you. Um, my brother, obviously he was, uh, he was pepper sprayed and he was tased. He had um, 18 sets of burn marks on his body from the taser. That means he was tased at least nine times with two prongs. It could have been more than that because uh, you only need one prong to actually electrocute someone with a taser. All of the burn marks on his body from this instrument were to his back, the backs of his thighs, and his buttocks. That is not the posture of someone that's trying to fight. That's someone that's either trying to get away or is down on the ground. Uh, he had broken ribs. He had a ruptured testicle. Witnesses saw a police officer standing on, on top of his body on the ground. He was handcuffed behind his back. He was delivered to the emergency room, handcuffed behind his back. Can anyone describe to me how you uh, apply CPR to someone who's handcuffed behind their back? I, I don't think it's possible, really. Um, and when our family went to the hospital to ask what had happened, the uh, excuse was his heart gave out. Oh, uh, he just died. So um, we decided to pursue litigation to try and find justice for my brother and a cause of death. Um, many people saw this. This was in the middle of the day. Again, he had committed no crime and he was carrying no weapon. My brother was mentally ill and didn't respond to their um, commands to get into the car. He was carrying a Bible and going to church. This happened on church property. Um, when we allow things like this to happen, we do such a great service in our communities. Um, if you see something, say something. Let's all um, observe and not allow this to continue in the society that we live in. It's disgusting. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Juanita Young. My son, Michael Ferguson, was murdered by police officer Louis Rivera on March 1st. From that day to this, Rivera has changed my life. And all I could do was think about why this low life killed my son. Um, after seven years of fighting with this court system and the support of so many people, you know, especially October 22nd coalition, we took um, Rivera's ass to court on a civil matter and proved that um, Louis Rivera murdered my son for no reason. And what did they do to Rivera? Not a thing. 
what the DA in the Bronx say? Just because you prove that he was guilty in a civil case don't mean he's guilty in a, um, a murder case. You know, what does that tell us? As long as we keep dealing with this racist cop system, we're going to continue to live the way we parents are living right now. Because we are allowing the, the system and this supposedly police force to rule our lives. They come out here, they break in your house, they abuse you, they harass you, they murder you. And I'm not speaking for what somebody told me. I have went through every action that they have done to me in the past 11 years. But it does not stop me from saying, I'm going to stand up to you, Rivera, until you get what's yours. Why do we, the mothers and fathers, have to bury our children? Why are you going out here killing innocent little babies? The little girl in Detroit sleep in her bed. I mean, on the couch in her house. What did that cop do? Threw a grenade through the window. When the grandmother went to see what happened with her grandbaby, the cop shot the little girl in the neck. Then turned around and arrested the grandmother, saying it was the grandmother's fault that the little girl got um, shot. What is that telling you? They have no respect for human life. And to a vengeance to this day, I hope today we tear down this racist cop system that we are being forced to live in. I'm going to now give to you um, Aline Pearson, whose son, two more person, again was murdered in the Bronx by a ruthless, low life cop. Yes, Woo! yes. Hello, my name is Ellen Person. My son's name was Tamor Person. On December 6, uh, December 13, 2006, the cops shot him. They shot him five times. Uh, my daughter-in-law came to tell me about it, and the cops never came to me and told me anything. They never said why they shot my son, what he was doing. All I know is my son is dead. It was not fair to me. I, that's my baby boy, and I miss him so effing much. I'm not, not going to curse. I'm John Canato Jr. My dad was John Canato, the murder victim of a, of a cop, and I'm just here for justice. You know, that cop goes home to his bed every night and sleeps comfortably, and my dad, I'm never going to be able to speak to him again. So I'm just here for justice and a voice to be heard and known. What he didn't tell you was all he did was go to the store. He came out the store to try to come to somebody's defense. And what happened? Some plain clothes, low life, decided he had the upper hand, pulled out his gun and shot him. Now why is this boy without his father? Because that man had the upper hand with that gun. Okay, I'm gonna now bring to you Joanne Mickens, whose son, okay, she's another mother, but her pain is so hard. Speaking about it, it just, she just cannot do it. But I'm gonna tell you the story of her son. He was sitting in a restaurant with his friends eating in Hell's Kitchen. And all of a sudden, these, these cops come up to him, put him up against a wall. I'm sure you're gonna remember this story. They put him up against the wall and started searching him and one of the cops claimed he had a gun. Somehow or another, some gun um, action took place in that um, restaurant. This cop claimed um, he was shot in the ankle, that, he, that, her, that her son shot him in the ankle. But when they already had him apprehended, what is that telling you? But yet to this day, that cop never took that bullet out of his ankle to prove it was their own bullet. His own cop, his own partner shot him. But yet and still, this mother got to sit in pain because why? The system don't want to help her. Why? Because of the people that's protecting this cop. You tell me, what is it going to take for us to stop doing this? But yet you see her pain. She cannot talk about what these low life did to her. But yet, she's, she's in a hospital like me with her asthma because the pain we have to live on a constant basis. I mean, it takes you, the people, to support us to do what needs to be done and turn around and tell those bastards to get out of our face. We don't need them because just like you go home to your family and they ask you, what did you do today? Oh, we catch the bad guy. Fuck no, you are the bad guy. Uh -uh. Yeah. Okay.
and then mastermind this crime. Where's the people? Where's the fucking voices? I went to Senator Perkins. You know what he said? What he got to do with me? This is American human issue. This is all our issue. When you use our people, Martin Luther King said to be silenced is a betrayal. And since 2009, it's been a betrayal. We have been sold out by our own fucking government. They used us and used my family. And they used a schizophrenic working to a miracle again by God from Hades with no family. And nobody didn't say nothing. I met with the rabbi at the synagogue. And like I told him, you keep getting grants. And my nephew going away for life. He got life. And a fucking crime that was fake by the Justice Department. I can buy the Justice Department. This is a fucking unjust case. Unconstitutional. So when we let our government just shit on us like this, it's time for us to take a stand. I've been standing like Egypt. I don't know about y'all. But I'm going to keep standing up like Egypt. Because the unjust is an unjust. When you turn on your own American people, it's time for us to say, enough is enough. I am the 99%. I am American. And this is what democracy looks like. Wake up. As we gather here today, marking the October 22nd National Day Against Police Brutality, we stand together, we march together, and are rallying together to end the criminalization of our bodies and our communities. We gather here in this day to demand an end to the brutality we face by the police, law enforcement, and the criminal justice system. We need each other to stop this invisible violence. We are here to say as lesbian, gay, bisexual, two-spirit, trans and gender non-conforming people of color that we are tired of living in fear. We are tired of being subjected to intimidation, violence, abuse, and the murder of our friends, family, and community by police who often use their power to police our bodies and our communities rather than crime. We need each other to stop this invisible violence. We live in a society where 70% of anti-LGBT murders are of people of color. Our community is more likely to experience violence at higher rates. Here in New York City alone, 24% of, of street-based sex workers are raped by police. Where 98% of queer youth of color have experienced some form of harassment and police violence. We need each other to stop this invisible violence. Because for lesbian, gay, bisexual, two-spirit, gender non-conforming people of color, protection from the police means over-policing our communities, unlawful arrests. It means often being arrested ourselves when we call for help and being re-victimized or denied medical treatment. It means trans women being accused of soliciting sex simply for standing on the block. The kind of protection we are asking for will not come from an inherently racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic institution like the NYPD. Christopher Columbus did not discover America. Was the god of death indeed, y'all? Now, Pizarro and Balboa like to show their shiny armor, and they all killed our people in the name of gold and greed. Jesus didn't have nothing to do with it, now. They took him along just to justify the plan. Well. We shall not be removed here from Sugar Land. Oh, listen to me, Sugar Land. We got the gold, the gold ain't for sale, and it can't be stolen. Sugar Land, lies have been told, bodies been sold, but we keep on rolling, rolling. Sugar, sugar, sugar land, y'all. Hey, hey. Raising up Cain and Sugar. So hard, uh, back 
Who shot Sean Bell and then got off so easily? Fight and flight, and justified sleazily. Greasily, they slipping, eyes open wide. Our people are tripping out because cops been getting away with murder since way, way back in the day. And I, I'm all about praying as long as our prayers don't keep us from straying from ourselves and who we be. Beautiful, powerful, unique. Complete and free, remember yourself, remember that dream you had and put up on the shelf. Cause you felt hopeless, couldn't deal with the things you had witnessed. Take it down, take it down, put it in a circle of people then spin it around. Well, it might not be the answer, but it's a whole lot better than blowing your brains out, Lord. Can I get an arm and rock? Bigger, bigger, bigger for Cha Cha. Can I get the hands flying in the air? Hallelujah. Can I get a whoop, 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 whoop? And police brutality. Thank, Thank you, you. Mahina Movement. This song is on the CD for the October 22nd Coalition. Voices Against Police Brutality. Yes. Support this. See one of the people over here. We love you. Thank you. Brother Sweet from World Can't Wait. All right. All right. You know, y'all are beautiful, but I hate this. 16 years I have never missed a protest to stop police brutality, repression, and the criminalization of a generation. And we should not have to be doing this. You think about the number of stolen lives, you think about the thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of stop and frisks, you think about the humiliation, the wasted lives in the prison industrial complex, and you think about all this done in our name. We live in the richest country in the history of the world with the biggest military ever that is doing this kind of shit all over the globe. Right. Taking that mass incarceration, putting it in Afghanistan, in Guantanamo, in Iraq, stamping all this with illegality, illegitimacy, immorality, injustice, and done in our name. That's one of the reasons I am so proud to have been part yesterday of the action to begin the campaign to stop, stop and frisk with these brothers and sisters. <laughs> Only a few of the 33 that were down there and we are sincerely calling you all to be the next wave. We are not stopping until stop and frisk is history. Whether it's the Bronx, any of the five boroughs, as we said yesterday, the top of the Bronx to Staten Island, we are going to these precincts. We are going to conduct nonviolent but serious civil disobedience. To stop. We will not stop until it ends. Tomorrow we're meeting at 2 o'clock, all the way uptown in Harlem. We want you to join us. And one last request. Two of our brothers that were busted with us yesterday, Jamel Mims and Eddie Diaz, are still being held for no good reason except that they are organizers and fighters in this movement to stop police brutality. We'd like as many of you as possible, as soon as this rally is over, to come down to 100 Center Street with us. We're going to greet these brothers when we get out. And we're going to fight their case all the way through. Stop and frisk is not about stopping crime. Stop and frisk is the crime. Stop and frisk don't stop no crime. Stop and frisk is the crime. Stop and frisk don't stop no crime. Stop and frisk is the crime. Stop and frisk don't stop no crime. Stop and frisk is the crime. All right.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. I'm so used to my cousin Nicholas's father uh, having this microphone and not me. He's in Georgia right now where they killed Troy Davis. And I will not forget that. He's there now. So this circle will not be unbroken. I much rather prefer that my cousin be alive today than buried. If you're not familiar with the story of the case, Nicholas Hayward was 13 years old. He was a child, a child. But in this country, 13, black, little boy, poor, does not mean a child. It means potential to not have a childhood. <clears throat> Playing Cops and Robbers, a great classic Americana game with his friends in the Gowanus Projects. He turned a corner, a housing cop shot him, shot him, and he died. And I lost my dear friend. He would have been 30 today. He would have had a family. He would have been here. He would have been writing poetry, art, but none of that came to pass. So that circle will not be unbroken. That's why I'm talking today. We each have the power. We each have a voice that can be used the best way we can and the only way we know how. So take the people's mic back home. You know what I'm saying? Take it back home. Bring it to your home and begin to hear each other and dialogue it out as family. Begin to talk to one another as family. Stand where you are at and use what's in your hands. That's not me, that's Adam Clay Powell Jr. Old school activist. Use what's in your hands. So that means if it's your cell phone, like Vanessa said, use that. If it's your pen, write it out. You know what I'm saying? Start to begin to get involved in your life. Not because it's a march or because people are fly and they're gonna talk it out and walk it out. No, because it's your life. And there's nothing more valuable than that. I get to breathe every day when my cousin does not. Nicholas will never ever have the joy of growing up. He'll never ever ever become an adult. He'll never vote for Obama or not vote for him again. He'll never ever ever get to be now. But we do. So if you're here now, begin to get involved now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't be like, all right, you know, once I hit this joint, I'll wait. No. <laughs> get involved now. Because it's now. I thank you all for listening to me. I thank you all for being with me at this moment. I don't ever want you guys to join a club that I'm a part of, ones that lose their families. I don't ever want you in that club. So get involved. Thank you. I'd like to call up another speaker. She's like fired, fired up. Like that anger has been transformed into poetics and powerful words. So please give it up to Danette. <laughs> How you doing? First, I'd like to say that every day is October 22nd. People are dying every day, left and right. And I myself am a victim of police brutality. I lost my son, my only son, in 2004 at the hands of police brutality. And I put all that uh, anger and rage that I have in the form of um, poetry, speaking and teaching. So today I'm going to share something that I wrote about the police about things that I've seen go on in the community. And I'm gonna do it a cappella because I have no music, so bear with me. 
When it rained on me, I just danced in it. When they shit it on me, I grew two lips. And with these two lips, I blessed the gift from my lips, representing majesty, divinity inside of me. Blazing new trails where others fail. Brothers and sisters in and out of jail. Bought and sold at their disposal. Reaping in riches, amounts untotaled. Where's justice? Where's peace? Out on the curb line six feet deep. When indeed will we see that they're called the U.S. And so, I arm me. Arm yourselves indeed with guns. Cause you don't know when they gonna come. What, you thought for son I had these guns? No, I'm packing for you when you come. So post up in my community if you want to. Pass judgment on the ones you see that come through. Bust in the doors of alleged drug sales. Question everybody and then make them pay bail. Witness crime and then walk the other way. Make them run, then chase them so they die where they lay. Pretend you're a cabbie and hope you get hell. But in patrol cars creep like you're scoping for tail. Blame everybody but you for crime. Pick and choose who you want to snitch and drop dime. Then play heroic while you're dragging them in. Write up the charges, leave, then do it again. Talk shit to your partner how you had him on the ground Pounding and pounding his face to the mound Till blood burst forth and you was exhausted And came this close to sending a nigga to his coffin How and when did you become a cop? They taught you who they assault? You drop. They made you co-conspirator to the crimes And promised you a bailout and get out of doing time So you ran out to do all they taught you to do So you'd make detective and run your own crew Well how does it feel to kill a man in cold blood One who's begging and screaming his whole life to be loved One with nothing at all but the clothes on his back By which you judge him and hunt him and wage your attack They're poor, young and ignorant of the vices against them and convicted of a crime not even his friends believes him so off he'll go to jail making products they'll sell and won't even question once why they couldn't post his bail they'll call him through the board when parole comes around declare him unhabilitated cast him hope to the ground and when finally released no employment will he find but five years free labor is penalty for a crime they'll insist get a job you must employed and every opportunity they get they'll avoid hiring a man a man who's convicted this justice they serve ain't nothing but wicked for they stolen your life and took away your rights and could care less whether you live or die how the hell they ever thought that they'd rehabilitate when everything about you they themselves have made they ain't got no business even talking about justice because everything they got from another land they stole it they speak peace but they mean war and what the hell is it that we waiting for the assaults against us are 24 7 in god we trust but they get the heaven they get the heaven and keep us in hell arresting and killing and filling in their jails when it's all said and done who will listen who will run for the hour fast approaching every man will need his gun uh, yeah. But they said war, and when they come against me, they gon' get what they came for. Yeah, give it up. There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have the pleasure of, of, of been uh, been torn with Evan Greer, an amazing white folk singer, and uh, we. we some acoustic folk hip hop shit, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna get that going. Mic check. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. It's like an actual mic check. Alright, so I'm gonna send this song out to all the queer, transgender, two spirit, lesbian, bisexual people off this crowd. Because let's remember, you know, the cops, they're kind of, they're, they're not exactly equal opportunity oppressors, right? Like, they like to pick on certain people. That's poor people, people of color, and especially queer people of color. And uh, unfortunately, the mainstream gay rights movement doesn't want to talk about that. They just want to talk about getting gays to join the U.S. military so they can go kill people in other places. Right? So this is my this is my response to that bullshit. And Spiro's gonna flow on this too. This is gonna be a collaboration with Bell's Roar, Chantel, for Broadcast Live. People ask 
be if I am a drag queen? I tell him that I've never been into royalty. That's why I'm up in the pub yelling fucking MP. Brits out of Ireland, Palestine free. If I had to choose, I'd be a drag peasant. Organizing a rebellion, no time like the present. Glitter in my hair, bitch book in the air. Coming through those mainstream, cause I swear. Assimilation, white picket vets, Disney vacation, joining in their military occupation, fucking people up with hate crimes legislation, equal to the people who run the corporations, living up in park slope gentrification. I say resist this elitist bullshit. I say it's time for a new movement. If you're feeling this song, you can all sing along. When I say queer, you say we're strong. Queer, we're strong. Queer, we're strong. Queer, we're strong. Waited too long to be sitting, listening to politicians saying, hey, give you another inch if you give me another day. Have some patience, be a good gang. Just like FEMA with Katrina, they say help is on the way. But put your hands up if you're being lied to. Make some noise if this government is working for you. Check one, two. Well, I guess we got our answer, so what are we going to do? Buy it in the streets till the break gets on. Start a revolution while we're getting it on. Of our children will be our revenge The only things on our fingers are for self-defense Don't ask me what I think Cause I tell you what I'd say We don't need gays in the military We need militant gays So we have struggles all the way from Chapas, Mexico To no good, fall back, tell me why that should. Um, look, I'm on a trip to Chapas, trying to find out where the yell ya basta. What's against Southeast and as a Batista? My community would love to meet ya. So, got hugs to greet ya. Learn from each other, each one's a teacher. Concern for my brother, cause they out to beat ya. The same thing that's out to beat us. We got power, they can't defeat us. My struggle run back way before the fetus. Our ancestors, kings, and queens, Serena. Why should I settle for the chains they keep us? Locked in cages, minimum wages, gentrification, land grab, look at what they taking. Rise up, Harlem, they shaking. Housing tenements, some of be vacant. From the blocks, tell them all back. Some reparations for the shit my people stole Cause the guilt that I built is buried to the hill My heart, I do my part, my art is only a start You know you order liberation, it don't come all apart To go on down for the struggle Give me some darts to blow Give me names and addresses To people making millions and all of their investors Let me go Sylvester, Rambo, Camo Puma and Elder sat me down and she was like Damn yo, what if it's deeper than that? What if we took them all out and shit still was whack? What if way, way back when they invented white and black? They poisoned all our minds, set us on a track that meant they could oppress us even if they ain't around. But they're looking for our souls at the local boss and found. Waiting for our masters like a puppy at the pound. Barking up the wrong tree instead of going underground to the roots. The truth, want a future for the youth. Get out of the booth, go on combat boots. Writing rhymes is fine, we ain't got the time. I'll give you six. Bars, all you need is nine. Tell me for the leaders of it. 
shots to your hell, eight shots to them. Save one for yourself, just in case you're facing torture in one of their cells. Seven years with the fear of what the stitches will tell. Six feet under, looking back in your life. Working five days a week, full of struggle and strife. Did you give all that you had before you saw the white light? Four seasons, solar reasons not to give up the fight. Three bitches to the fishes in the oceans that rise. Two precious burning bright in my baby's blue eyes. For every precious creature living under the sun, will the world be undone or will the world be? One.